relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. See, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. But if it gets you better, you need this medicine. It ain't gonna always taste good. This is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have a conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody, I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I can be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was? Before I was me, I was you. You man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. What up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. This is Corona Lockdown show number what? Five? Are we doing I don't it? know. Uh, I've lost track. AD, Seven. Corona or AD after Corona? I don't know. What's going on, Harry? How you doing, bro? I'm doing good. I'm just more enthralled by uh, Andre's background. By the way, if well, you want to see these, by the way, we're putting all these shows on YouTube. Go to the YouTube page. <laughs> you could see uh, the little joy Andre ha has left in this world, which is fucking around with the virtual background. <laughs> it's of, a beautiful thing. Of the president smoking uh, Lysol jewels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to watch that vaping. You got to really watch that vaping. No. Uh, uh, Dre, you ready to rock and roll? Yeah, bro. I got chips in my hands. I'm ready to do this. I'm we got. We got. Don't be chewing in the mic. Um, we got special <laughs> guests in the building. Uh, uh, sketch comedy, Instagram influencer, uh, all kinds of shit she's doing. Uh, how do you do the honors, please? That's right. AKA known as uh, Damn Homie Eleven on Instagram with a huge following. Uh, the lovely Maya is here with us. Maya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Uh, thanks for having. How you holding up, sweetie? How you holding up? I'm okay. I've been actually using this as a good thing. Like instead of saying, "Oh shit, I'm gonna be home and doing nothing," I'm right. I'm doing like everything that I've been putting off for months. Like there's, you know, this is the best time for writing. And all those times where people were like, "Get a real job," and now we're the only ones with jobs because everything well, we do yeah. is social media. So we're actually yeah. working more right now. Yeah, it's a little, it's a, it's an interesting dynamic how things are going to change. But it, I mean, it, it, it's weird because as you know, you do a lot of sketches and stuff. You do stuff on YouTube as well, or is it mostly Instagram or both or what? No, I don't, I don't really do YouTube. I, I did when I first started, but I never wanted to fall into the category of like a YouTuber. Because once you start doing YouTube and, you know, you, you forget what else you want to do. I want to, you know. Have a what do you what do you mean you forget what else you want to do? I don't understand. No, like I right now I'm writing a book and I want to you know the book is also going to be written as a like a pilot that I'm going to shoot that I'm going to pitch as a show. Mm -hmm. So and is it like a memoir of of some of the things you did or what's your what's your full background so everybody knows for for people who don't know explain how you know how you got into all this stuff and and everything. Well, I was doing real estate um, and. You know, I was making money, like, and, and I was great at it, but I would, I just wasn't happy. And it took for me to go through something really crazy, like, for my, you know, I was dating somebody for a year and a half, and then I found out he had a side bitch in Baltimore, so I ended up just leaving him. And then six months later, he ended up actually, no, uh, as soon as I left him, he ended up marrying her, and then six months later, he killed her. Jesus. Really? Wow. Way to dodge the bullet, Maya. <laughs> yeah, so when that happened, it's like it opened my eyes to where, you know, that could have been me. And, yeah, like, I can't keep living like this, you know. I'd rather take a chance and make less money, but not wake up every morning, like, dreading getting out of bed. Wait, I'm because there's, there's kind of a disconnect here. I, I don't know how we got to you dating this guy to real estate being, you know, maybe. What was the connection 
between this guy and what you were doing? Or are you just saying because you almost died, you were like, I'm not going to be unhappy. I don't want to do anything that I'm not happy doing anymore. Meaning like uh, two years, I've only been doing this for two years, not even, you know? So mm -hmm. before that I was doing real estate. Like I just, I wanted to be a normal person, just have, you know, regular job, have a family, kids. And, you know, the guy that, I mean, the guy has nothing to do with real estate because he wasn't in real estate. He was a scammer, which is crazy if you think about it, because I had a job where I have people's personal information. And it's like, if they only knew that my boyfriend was like a piece of shit loser that like stole people's money and shit. But okay. obviously I never like involved him in my work. Was he Russian? No. <laughs> no. Was he well, African? He scammers, but not <laughs> for God, you know? Uh, African Africans do a lot of paper tracing. No, but, he was uh, Dominican, but oh, okay. he did it mostly yeah, like, in Florida, like back yeah. when, you know, it was so possible. Now they made it super hard, but. Right. Now, how did the, um, how did, uh, so he lived in Florida. He, he didn't live here. Yeah, where he do you, where York, do you live? But he would go to where Florida to scam. Okay. Oh, okay. And I was, right. if I was in New York, I, I lived in uh, Columbus Circle and I was just doing real estate for city habitats. Uh, wow. And it, and what was the, is, is there anything that you could think of that might have made you think, uh, you know, this guy could murder me? Or is that, like, in retrospect, because, you know, after it's all over, we, we look back and you see the red flags. Is there anything that you thought that that might have been the case? I think with everybody, you see red flags. But, you know, like, a lot of times we like someone, it's like, we let it go. Like, oh, but he's hey, cute. Go on bail you know, money. I'm like, oh, so cute the we way he's shopping. so many nice. things that we shouldn't. But I yeah. feel like the clues were all there. It's just I didn't yeah. know. At the time, like, I had a best friend of 10 years who hooked me up with him. And she never told me his background. Like, she was a PO. I, I didn't even know she was a PO. I thought she worked for a doctor's office like every other Russian girl. But mm -hmm. this girl, like, hooked me up with him, not telling me that he, like, went to jail for five years for beating the shit out of his babe moms and, like, mm -hmm. five other girls. Like, I didn't know any of this. And she's actually, the reason me and her stopped being friends is because when he had a warrant for his arrest, she's the one that called the cops on him. And so you were you were mad that he she called the cops on him? Or, or? Because, uh, like, why is that your business? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I mean, he kind of. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, if somebody I mean, has a warrant after the arrest, <laughs> why would you go out of your way to call the cops on them? Let the cops get them themselves. Like, why are you making it easy? I think job? what she's saying is no snitching. Don't no snitching. No yeah. snitching. Why well, you got to snitch? Yeah. And know. after that, you know, when I asked her about it and she denied it, I can't have people around me that, you know, a snitching. Yeah. They don't keep the code. Cops, obviously. Right, 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 right. But okay. Go ahead. Go ahead so Ari. that leads. So that that type of stuff happens and you go, hey, it's time for me to have a little bit of a better life or a more enjoyable life. And then so you hit Instagram or did it come sort of naturally? Did you just get a lot of people liking your pics and stuff? Like what was the progression of that? No. Um, one day we just recorded a video in Cody Island where I'm walking and my, my homeboy is like driving and trying to holler at me. And I get in and I ask him to see his dick. And that video just went viral out of nowhere so that shit is comedy gold right there <laughs> so it's like when it when it happened i didn't want to be the let me see your dick girl so i had to just keep doing videos i didn't really want to <laughs> i would have died my girl. tombstone would have said no, your lies, Yo, let me see your dick girl let me see your dick girl right so that's, that's what people crazy. really follow me so i'm like i cannot be that Yo, i started Yo. doing other shit like making sure yeah. people know i'm a comedian not the fucking let me see your dick girl <laughs> My mom loves to let me see your dick, girl. Let me get a picture my to send my mom. That video also. <laughs> and so Yo, could you take a picture with my kids? This is my son. He's three <laughs> with the let me see your dick, girl. So well, you see, like, so I was like, ah, uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be known as anything. Like, that's why all my comedy's always been like, I change it up all the time so that no one knows me as the girl that does this or that. Like, you're just, you're going to know me as someone who said okay, so, random so, stories. Some of the feed is comedy videos and then other feeds are some, you know, you, I guess, would it be considered modeling or just shots right. or what do you consider it? I don't model, like, but okay. I think that's like the saddest thing to be unless you work for like Victoria's Secret. It's like, yo, when I meet girls and that's like, what do you do? I'm a model. It's like, ah, oh, shit. What else do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, unless you're in college. Like, when I was going to college, I used to do music videos, but. Come on, like, you know, bitches be like... Yeah, but that's what they say. They say that about comics all the time. They be like, oh, you, you, you're a comic? Uh, can you write a script? Do you have that's a book? That's different, because 
like yeah. to be a comedian, I think, well, no, it's kind of similar because it's, no, because modeling, you could be ugly and then you could make yourself beautiful. If you're not funny, you're not, there's no way to make yourself funny. Do you, um, no, I, don't, I don't know. I disagree with that. I mean, I teach, I teach it. Um, I mean, there's definitely, you know, when you talk about there's fundamentals of, of, of comedy that are in place and people, some people have a knack for it, but we, we, I've been doing comedy 20 years. Harry's coming up on 20. Dre, how many years you got now? Eight. Eight. So it's like, there are people who are not naturally funny who, who have learned the technique of being funny, how, you know, especially when you're talking about sketch and doing videos, the structure and stuff like that. I mean, Harry writes, you know, he's wrote for a couple of radio stations and other stuff and he writes for a wrestling company. So there's, there's definitely a structure that you understand that you got to kind of understand that works. And some people have a knack for it right out the gate, but it is something that you can learn. I just think it's, it's not, it's, you see extraordinary comics when they have when they are funny and they know the structure you know what i mean like both both ends of it so um you know harry you wrote a lot of stuff i mean it but it was it was did you take classes or did you just like i i did take classes at ucb early on to to learn like the format of sketch comedy yeah, and structure stuff the structure so there is a structure to it you know like you want to you come out with a sketch for the most part. All right, something normal, something weird happens, and then uh, you try to normalize that, and then the weird thing happens again, and then again, and quicker and quicker, and you want to go like three beats. And I'm explaining it really fast, but right, right. most good sketches have that structure outside of like just like crazy yeah, random TV. shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you. I mean, as a scene, but you've never done stand up though, right? Me? Yeah, you have you done stand up? No, I I've, I've done it. Like I've I've went on like open mics before, but to actually do stand up, I was like I kept saying I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, but I never like sat down and f really forced myself to like learn how to write because writing stand up yeah. and skits are two different things. Like absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. me skits, you know, once I learned how to do it, it became super easy. But stand up is like you have to write ten minutes of of a story where you're keeping people interested in what you're saying. And, you, and you're looking about seven seconds, every seven to 10 seconds, you're supposed to be getting laughs throughout yeah. that, which a lot of our, our uh, colleagues don't do that at all. But that's all. <laughs> thing. Uh, but it, it's a, uh, it's an interesting thing that to, 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 to understand that, you know, just to even understand the, because a lot of in, Instagram influencers don't even like, like, I mean, literally, I don't think I really had an understanding of stand up and what it was. It took me like 10 years to really get to the point where I felt confident enough that I knew what I was doing. And then I realized how much I sucked that 10 years. <laughs> but it's like, it, it just, you know, it just so, it just keeps getting like the depth of how good you can get and the nuance of the things you can learn is so, so much, so much deeper than you understand. It's not just, Here's what I'm saying, and this is funny, and then it then it goes to well, I want to say something funny, but I want it to be true to me, and then I want to make a ma you know, it's just there's just levels to it. Um, but you Hell you yeah. you started doing this just as you, from that one video, you don't want to be the the cuss your dick girl, and then you just started doing these videos, and how long did it really take for you to take off? Well, like when I when I started doing it, it's like my you know my next video was like when drug dealers want to be your friend in real life and it's like me buying drugs and now he's asking me what I'm doing later if, he, if I want to go to movies with him and I'm like um you know so wait you're we gonna pay for me with the money I just gave you so I started right, making right. comedy like that and the first couple of months like my following wasn't really growing crazy because everybody's seen the video but it wasn't like I didn't tag it so no one everyone thought it was a real video Oh, okay. Right. It took a good six months for people to realize, wait a minute, because I'm starting to post other skits and I have a certain mm -hmm. style of doing it. And they're like, wait a fucking minute, that's that girl. And so was it was it just the idea of you learning how to how to promote it? Was that the thing or just no, it's not about knowing like how to having people collab with you because you in in skits you you have to have other people take you seriously. You don't have, I mean, you don't have this. A lot of people come up just, you know, doing videos by themselves, but yeah. I wanted like other people to respect me that do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. not everybody needs that, but for me, it's like, I want that respect. It, like, even if you don't think I'm funny, you're going to respect my hard work. Right. So when I'm doing so skits, it's like, it, you know, got to the point where I, I know, I know what the fuck I'm doing at this shit. 
but every there's two types of comedians there's the influencer like instagram ones and then there's the stand-up comedians and those the stand-up comedians look down on influencers because they're like you're not a real comedian unless you do stand-up which is why i said i have to do stand-up like to just to prove i can like and because that's what i want to do like i love telling stories and i don't always want to tell a story in under one minute right right well i mean i think i think the the I mean, it's a different, it's a different art form. And also it's a, it's a situation where you, you, um, you know, the depth of it, but I mean, even, you know, you, you kind of, you, you respect the fact that this is something that people do for years and years and years and years. And it's, it's just, it's a craft that you have to learn, but you know, it's, it's a funny thing when people say, you know, like you said, I want to do stand up just to show that I can do it. But the reality is that, well, I uh-huh. just want to show that I could do it, but that's what I'm, I feel like that's what I'm meant to do. Oh, you, you want to be a stand up? Yeah, you, I've always wanted to. I just never thought I'd have the balls. Like, but, you know, it takes some, a, it took a lot for me to, to happen to me, for me to mm-hmm. like really say, why do I care what anyone thinks? The only opinion that really matters is my father's. Everybody else, I don't give a fuck. And once you start living like that, where you know family is the only thing that matters and like you don't have could to worry you, about could other you people. ask your father if, if he thinks I'm cool cuz I mean his <laughs> his, his opinion. opinion that matters I want to know that I'm at least I'm good am I good ask him if I'm good in my, um, oh, that's how I feel like his opinion is yeah. the only one that matters so when people say what does your dad think my dad follows me and likes most of my videos and he yeah. helps shoot a lot of them Right, right, right. So does your dad help shoot the close-ups of the ass? Because that's got to be uncomfortable because there are a lot of <laughs> ass shots in there. And my dad will say, I've changed our diapers, whatever. Like if, but if it's a close-up of my asshole, obviously my mom will help me with that. Like, you <laughs> <know>? <laughs> yeah, you got your different departments. Let's be Everybody's reasonable. Everybody's got a exactly. department. Like, it's a family you know, affair. Family first. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, I mean, you, you're definitely using sex appeal in a lot of these videos for sure, and you don't have any issue with that. Yeah. Like, uh, as a person, did you use that in your life prior to this? Like, as a real, you said you did real well in real estate, and then I see some pictures on of Instagram. Of course, you and did. I'm like, of course you did. <laughs> of course you did. It's, no, uh, real estate. I never use my sexuality. Like, I will go to work every day dressed in all black, like in like sportswear. Um, never have makeup. Barely ever have my hair done. I would always look like I'd be going to the gym. Maybe, like, I'd have my hair up, no makeup, maybe sunglasses. And most right, of the time okay, I'm- stop. Because you look. Let me explain something to you. There's no way that you're gonna look. Not your sexuality is not your intention. But guys are still gonna find you attractive if you got your hair no, up on. I, I, I feel like I get hollered at more when I have no makeup on than when I do. For some reason, how do you weird. think that is? Um, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like the, the, okay, the if I'm all up, they're gonna be intimidated. But yeah. if I look like shit, they're gonna say, "Oh, who's this bitch? This bitch ain't gonna say no to me. She looks like shit right now." Yeah, probably. yeah. Andre's on the money. It's the, the, in- yeah. it's the intimidation. Happy, fucking looked at her. Yeah, yeah. 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 Still done up, got the heels on. No, my dad feel, oh, God, I me to be that girl where it's like I go to you know work every day, heels and a dress. But no, I always because I worked with a lot of like husband and wives, and I know like. The last thing I want to do is like make the wife mad and uncomfortable. Like the whole time you yeah. want to just ignore the husband completely. His opinion doesn't fucking matter. She's the one you're paying all your potential. Right, because you she's already she already hates your guts already. Yeah, for just living. So. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Right. It's crazy. So wait, that's interesting that you appeal to the to the wife. Is it just because you want to disarm her, or is it yeah, because you know. you know that her perspective leads what the purchase is going to be? I knew that you know I. Like, I cater to, like, every person I spoke to, like, like this is really how I speak 24-7. But, you know, when I was doing real estate, and all my all the properties were mostly, like, Upper East Side, Upper West Side. I'd have to put on, like, a white voice and be all like, yeah, so, you know, at 3 o'clock, you want to die? And it's like, you know, talking about That sounds people. like Andre. Andre sounds just like how you sound. Like. That's how I talk on a regular basis. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was, call me it's, young white. Soul. Like, it's hard for me to talk like that. But it's Andre, like, you know, Andre, they call how, you young white? It can be like talking <laughs> up to me, you know, a 47-year-old wealthy woman and be like, yo, what's yeah. good, bitch? I'll meet you at fucking 2 o'clock. I bet. I can't do that, so I'd, I'd have to do that. Andre, how would you close a house? How would you sell a house or, or an apartment? I would say uh, good evening, yeah. for one. <laughs> what about, it, what about if, it was, what if, if it's afternoon? Yeah. And you're going to look crazy. Then I like just the don't even the, know what time it is. 
You know what I mean? Good afternoon. What's that? What, what's afternoon? That's 12? Uh, 12. You're already out. I'm not buying a house from yeah, you. I <laughs> clearly don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, you know my heart good. You want this apartment or not? <laughs> not. Hey, lady, I'm coming from the heart. You want this or not? <laughs> no, you don't even know time. You don't know. But I know the dishwasher work. Yeah, but you might fuck up the decimal point. I don't want you to fuck up the decimal point on what this shit's going to cost because you don't know exactly. how to... Exactly. I fuck it up. It's cheaper now. Your boy looked out for you. Look at that. Look at God. <laughs> where's, where's God? Wait, look at God. <laughs> look at God. <laughs> look at God. Drop some. <laughs> oh, shit. What's wrong with you, Dre? It's really something Nobody wrong knows. Okay, know. so if you never use your sort of sexuality in real life... It's kind of a big leap I, in my head. I don't know. Maybe it's not to jump from that to being like, ah, I dress conservatively at work. And then online, I'm wearing like I'm showing my ass in these in these thong panties. Yo, and it's, it's really crazy because, you know, even recently, um, I'm, I'm talking to this guy and we're going on like, you know, we're on already day four, whatever. And like um, we were in my car, like just making out in the back seat, but that's it. The next day, he fucking texts me because I posted a video on the gram where I'm like shaking my ass, and he goes, "Instagram gets to see more of you than I do at four in the morning in the back of a car." And it's like a lot of people always ask me, like, "You per you make this persona of like this, you're like this big whore in real life, but in real life, you're actually like a fucking virgin." Like, mm -hmm. like you're very I, conservative, so so to speak. Yeah, like I, yeah, like, I don't know how to. Not as free. Yeah, I look like. Does that, like, does that bother I'm not, you? I'm not claiming to be an angel or nothing at all. I'm no. saying I'm not. I mean, you gotta get it in. As like, my, yeah. you gotta get, you gotta get it tapped. You gotta get the dust knocked off it every once in a while. Everybody. Bro, I can tell you the last time I had sex, like January 18, and before that, I don't. I can't. <laughs> why do you? Why did you say like January 18th when you know like, for a fact apparently it's, it's January 18th? The latitude, like the latitude. What happened January like, 18th is what I, I want to know. I was facing east. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was like sex. For an Instagram thought, I should be doing a lot more. I think, but yeah. you know. So let me ask you something. Do you have a problem with that? With the, what the representation? So, so th what's interesting is like we, you know, the integrity of the show, you know, is, is kind of talks about relationships and male female roles and stuff like that. And I mean, like I, I, I remember I won't get into it, but I had a thing on the internet, and then there was this whole perception of of it because they they go nuts, like motherfuckers, like they turn on you as quick as they with you and they're not with you. And then, they, you know, them motherfuckers, are, yeah. it's like real, like, uh, and a lot of it is a lot of motherfuckers who, who they're living there, you know, so here it is, you're, you've decided to stop selling real estate, do something that you want to do, create you're creating this kind of uh, aura of creativity and stuff. And these people are just watching you because they're not living life themselves. They're just, there's so much of this living through, the influencers. I mean, I guess that's why you call, they call you an influencer because people are looking at your life. But what's interesting is that you're saying to me, Here's, I was in this relationship and the dude could have killed me. And You know what I'm saying? There's, there's real stuff going on in your life. Yet and still the, the perception is that, you know, like you're in, everybody's Instagram is a snapshot of the best shit in their life. And then people start to perceive that your life is perfect like that all the time and here's a situation where you you literally could have been murdered by somebody that you that you dated you know um it's, so it's it's like how does that affect you in terms of the persona of what you what what who you really are and who you you know who they perceive you as i think it's, it it takes like a lot every comedian i think has been through a lot of fucked up shit to be able to just like laugh at it like damn like you know, like I, I started seeing the good and everything, even the worst shit. So it, it is hard because even before, like, um, I'm really good friends with Artie Fuqua that works at Comedy Cellar. And you know, yeah, I met him like 10 years ago. I think I, sorry. All right. Uh, Hello. Something is, uh, what happened there real quick? <laughs> I don't know. So I think her food is coming. Oh, okay. Well, we lost her there for a second. No, 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 no. <laughs> My friends are here about no. the kids and stuff. Um, oh, yeah. okay. So you're working. Sorry, yeah. Um, That's all right. That's all right. Multiple things. Um, we're just confused. I thought the toaster oven was done. No. <laughs> <laughs> the laundry box. Yeah. So, no, just 
Um, and I remember he told me he didn't drink, and I was like, why? He goes, because comedians get really depressed. And I go, how can you get depressed? Your whole life is about comedy. Like, But then becoming it, I'm like, I could see why, because there's days where I'm having the worst day of my fucking life, and I can't go online and start crying, because yeah. I'm here to make other people's day better. Nobody's well, not know, looking for me to make their day fucking worse. I mean, you could I don't go know online if you know this, but you know, Ar you know Artie well, then. You I know Artie yeah, well, I or you don't know him that well? Who, Artie? No, I know Artie yeah. for 10 years. Like, I sat, the way I uh, met him is I went to Comedy Cellar and I sat in the front row like an idiot. Mm -hmm. And he started making fun of me and I started going mm -hmm. back at him. And we just uh, went back and forth and, you know. Right, right. Because uh, Artie, man, I, I, I don't know if you know that, Harry. You know, Artie's son was killed. A, yeah, I'm, I, know. I, I was uh, yeah. Yeah, around been, for that time. And then period. the thing, he went through the whole thing with Tracy Morgan. And I mean, like, I just had a rough Did situation. You, like, had, daughter also every comedian's had some crazy shit happen. And you think, yeah. how the fuck can they, like, smile through all that? Just learn. I mean, what's the option? Do you know what I mean? Like, what's the option? You just, just going to not live anymore? Or, or you know, just not going to have no joy in your life? You know, I mean, I'm already was in a coma after yeah. the whole the uh, the whole uh, Walmart thing. He was in a coma for a minute. I mean, and Artie's one of the happiest guys I know. Actually, dude. anytime I, think it I see Artie, almost to die for you to realize, like, damn, like I gotta really. But he was a happy dude. Like he was. I mean, he's he was, always I been mean, a happy dude. Like, yeah, always. Yeah. It's just you know he's been through so much shit, but it's it's good to see him like living nice now and like. Yeah, yeah, it is. he deserves it. If anybody yeah. deserves it, he does. But it's just it's 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 an interesting thing trying to like because once you. Once you put stuff out, it's, it's like you were saying, you don't want to be the show me a dick girl. It's like once you put something out, you can't really you can't really even perceive how they're going to receive it. And so um, they get attached to it. And then then they start defining you for whatever they however they perceive you. It's like when when when, you know, like I remember Chappelle couldn't do Dave Chappelle couldn't do nothing without somebody going, I'm Rich James, bitch. Like th that they would he couldn't even get through his set to do that. It took a long time for that to wear off. And and that's pretty rough. But having someone shout, show me your dick from across the street and with their <laughs> thumbs up, show me your dick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. To a girl. Yeah. Damn, people stupid. No, yeah. I, don't, I don't think I've ever I, I haven't had too many people scream like, let me see your dick. Like, because it's like they're not trying to get punched. But right. a lot of everyone just damn homie. Like. Right, but you, but that's also because you knew you started doing other things so that you wouldn't be the let me see the. I mean, but yeah. you know, I mean, if that would have been the video, then that would have been, you know, that would have been what it is. It's, it's just you, you, you're always, you know. I started to realize that you know what you say really makes a difference because you can't just say you can't just be free and say what you want to say. You have to say what you want to say in mind with how people bend it and twist it in their own way and make it something that it's not, you know? So you always have to, it's sad because I think now comedy is in a place where we have to be so careful with our words. And I lo that's why I love old school shows because it's like certain things you can't even get away with now, but that's what Absolutely. comedy is all about. Yeah. Being able to say whatever, like the conversations I have with my friends in private, like are some of the funniest things like you could ever hear. But if we yeah. perform this shit in front of people, Oh my God! So everybody will be offended, and it's like well, I, I think nothing you gotta crazy. be. You gotta, you know, it's about being honest. It, yeah, it's, it's about eating. But so it's like uh, was watching that um that thing when Dave Chappelle got the Mark Twain Mark Twain Award, and what he was talking about was, you know, this is about truth. And he said a lot of times he knows, and I mean, me and Harry, we know that there's dudes who we know are out and out racist, and sure. their comedy is has a racist tone to it. But there's still a truth. There's an honesty and a truth to it. So if it's funny, it's funny. But the the point is, it, what what the, what I think is interesting. You know, people talk about how fucked up uh, comedy is that you can't say what you want to say. But what's interesting is there's a market for everybody like now. So even if you if even if you're out and out racist, you could you could have a channel. You could you could sponsor your own channel, and you just have all racists on your fucking channel. You know what I mean? Like, hey, shout hey, out hey, to hey, Compound yeah. Media. The, <laughs> I don't know how know, successful they'd be, but hey. Yeah, it's so so it's like you just got, um, like, a, I won't I won't put him put his name out because, I, you know, we still kind of cool, but he, he started talking this, you know, real racist, like Fox News shit, conspiracy stuff. 
but he moved and now he does his show right out of his house. And now he's really gone bonkers because at least before he had, um, he had other comics who were pressing back on his nonsense. You know what I mean? Like the, it's like the absurdness of when your fan base is so big that people, everything that you do is great. Even if it's not great, it's just great because you're doing it and nobody questions say, yo, that's, that's not really not that cool or that's not funny or that's not talented, or, you know, but when you start, you, you, you get into, I mean, that's, that happened to Dane Cook when Dane, Dane Cook had gotten, was like the biggest comic in the, in the world. And, and he, and it was a, always a funny dude, but then he got so busy that he was jerking himself off because the audience, anything he did was hilarious to them just because he did it. And it, they never questioned to see if it was, was it legitimately funny or was it not? It was like, oh, he did it. And so he's, and it, it's interesting how this whole thing becomes, you know, people wanting to be remembered. Everybody wants to be remembered. Everybody wants their likes up. They want their, it just, um, it, it's, which is funny because how you say you don't really give a fuck about, only thing you care about is what your father thinks. And it's like, but then you got a million followers on Instagram. It's so almost not giving a fuck was the thing that got them got people to listen to you in the first I, mean, I don't know if that if that helped or did you just kind of do what you do and and the following built no i think i think i just um i once once world star started fucking with me i think that's when my following started going crazy like and mm. they're basically like they're the a lot of people refer to them as like the gatekeepers like they decide who's lit and who isn't so it's like and they put so many people on that a lot of people that wouldn't be shit if it wasn't for them. Right. A lot now, of people who don't even deserve to have clout, but somebody saw something in them. Now, did, is, did they approach you or was you, were you just doing your videos and then they saw got a hold of something and they and they posted something or did they contact you directly? Is it like that? or, or No, you it? like, you send your videos into them. Like, and oh. I was sending them maybe for a year. Like some people send it right away. They start getting posted. For me, it took like a year of every day I'm sending it to them, nothing. And I'm like, and how many videos, how many videos a week would you put together? I post one, a video a day. So I, now I start, I even post, now. Yeah. So I started posting two videos a day. And since I have two pages, Sometimes I post like a video on one page and two videos on this page. So I'm constantly, I have to keep shooting content or, you know, thinking of like ways to like redo old content, making it better. So I, I always like, I will, I, I will say you wow. put a lot of effort into these videos. So I'm scrolling through some of them as the show goes on. And there's one where every girl's DM when she posts a thirst trap and you're just uh, twerking basically in front of your door and then in the street, these are like wide shots. Yeah. So and somebody is like doing this wide shit. shot. Four guys start running around in the streets of New York City out of nowhere. So there's like, yeah. it's not just, I got to give you credit. There's a lot of work that you put into it. So where does that mentality come from? Is Because you could get away with just showing tits and ass on Instagram and get a decent following. Yeah. What made you, what makes you decide to work at it a little more or what? Like what? Well, the, when you're doing skits, like you want to, you know, shoot with other people. And because sometimes like we create the funniest shit together. Like I could only do so many videos of like if women told the truth about sex before sex, after, during, about condoms. Like, like you, like I try to do every type of video and everyone's style is different. So that style is like, his name is uh, a piece by guy. And he does those type of styles where they're reenacting things in their life, but he posts it as a Twitter thing. And then yeah. also in the video with Ken Stars, who I shoot with on the regular, it's like basically my, um, I don't, uh, what do you say? Like my partner in this shit, kind of. Right. And your colleague, your colleague, colleague, collaborator. Yeah. So we, most of my videos is with him. And that's because we're really friends in real life. The videos always come mm. out amazing. Like, and the difference is in LA, like people that collab, they, even if they don't like each other, they're still going to work together because all they care about is their followers. In New York, if people don't fuck with each other, they would never work fucking. together. So for me, yeah. it's more like we, you know, I get to basically smoke weed for a living and meet up with my friends and shoot videos on our phone and just uh -huh, laugh all fucking day. So, you know, right, right, think right. of it more like we, we are co-workers and we get to just hang out all day. 
Can can I isn't ask? That a, I mean, isn't that a lot? Like you're shooting two. What do you say? Like two videos a day? You shooting? No, I sh I try to shoot like four or five videos a day by myself. So even if it's practice, a lot of times I don't even post the videos. Out of the five, I'll post two. But you want to practice every day. You always want to have content. You never want to not have shit to post and resort to having to post like the same video every fucking week. So, mm. You know. Here's the crazy thing. How does this affect you? The you know your your the clout and your fame. Like you said, you you haven't had sex since January. I mean, it's you you you're not a you you you're not a horrible person. Look to look at. You know what I mean? You're not, not horrible. Not, not, not. No, I, so I just I'm I'm one of those people where it's like I'm really picky and I still pick the wrong motherfuckers. Like it's crazy because it's not like I don't try to date. I try, but it's like. That's where I get all my skit ideas from is because I just have real, really weird shit that happens to me every day. Like even the last guy, like that whole skit about um, the Mary guy. Mm. That was about the last guy I was talking you know? And that's why I even said I can't even be mad at anything that happened because I wrote my first like, per like the stand up I wrote was about him, about the whole scenario with being a side bitch by accident. Mm hmm. How did that, what do you mean side bitch by accident? How does that happen? Explain like, that to us. Well, when a guy, you know, was married, but then he, 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 she didn't know. he basically oh, she didn't dating know. you and then you don't know you're a side bitch until you pick up the phone and it's his wife calling in the middle of the night. <laughs> That's a side bitch by accident story. So it's like. That's interesting because you are, you do think that you're, uh, you, as far as you know, you've won the position. You're like in charge and then you, you just walk in and see someone else at your desk. You're like, oh, that wasn't my desk. <laughs> yeah, it's. So it's like, you know, the my personal life has gone to shit, but, you know, my, but like, I don't really care because my work life, like, I think as a woman, you're not going to have everything. You're not going to be able to have a family and a career. So you kind of have to choose. Why do you think you keep making the same sort of uh, bad choices or making multiple bad choices? What do you mean? <laughs> Meaning you say you, you, you always pick the wrong guys. Yeah. So what do you, do you have any thought as to why it is you picked the wrong guy any theories i've thought or about it and it's unlucky um, i basically pick guys i know i can't have a future with so i don't have to act right like i could just act like a piece of shit do whatever i want um because it's like so i'm not gonna keep you around i'm sorry dante i was asking maya to answer i oh, oh sorry. i'm sorry oh wait <laughs> that was maya my bad <laughs> oh sorry I'm right that's a very bold honest answer yeah yeah, yeah. from you why like, you i never saw answer? myself being married or having kids honestly so i just purposely date guys i know i can't have a future with like guys that you don't want to have kids with or bring home to father like <laughs> mm. and that's so you're I'm sabbat saying. you're sabotaging it right before right out the gate yeah but <laughs> i'm saying what'd you say jay that's just insane because, like, I feel like a lot of girls do that shit and then they still go on Twitter and everything. They're like, niggas ain't shit. Men is this. And it's like, you keep picking no, the same of... six motherfuckers that's going to ruin that's, your life. That's yeah. why I, that's, that's, why Harry, of us that's why Harry was really surprised that she was just really on. Yeah, I right. dirt bag yeah. so I could do so I could be a dirt bag, which is just honest, which is in an honest it's a place. Very Deep therapeutic, a therapeutic answer. I, yeah. I self sabotage awesome. prior so what that am I, I don't gonna have say? to make I'm adjustments. Picky. Like I haven't met the right one. No, I, I have. Like yo, women will meet the perfect guy and shit on him, and then wonder why am I alone? Because you're a fucking idiot, bro. Like I was 22. <laughs> I met a guy that was 27. He was perfect. Like the even my father, the only guy he ever met. I don't introduce right. guys to my dad. Like you have to be someone special. Right. dad's even like you should have just married him bro i was 22 27 like he's ready for marriage and kids i was trying to go out like i haven't done shit yet so but looking back like i fucked up he was a <laughs> an amazing guy and no but the sad thing is he still didn't get married anyway you would think like the story ends with him meeting someone else but no yeah, because he's one of those good guys that just attracts whores for some reason because you don't want to <laughs> Because you Present don't want company to include <laughs> yeah. 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 Meanwhile, these guys are like are married already with a whole family and they just keep attracting these amazing women. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Like, stop taking all the women. Uh, Here's the funny thing, Maya. Every time you talk, Harry falls in love with you a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's not appealing. I know it's like a fire. I'm mesmerized, but I just want to keep getting closer to the heat. I know if I'm scared or confused. <laughs> You're going to get closer to you get burnt. Yeah, right, yeah, Icarus. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, it's. It, I was. Like, here's something I would like to ask you. Do you think you could have 
a good relationship with somebody and not necessarily be pres- pre- be be pressed to have get married and get kids or are you saying that if the guy is nice then that's kind of your your instinct just wants you to go to that level do you, do you understand what i'm saying yeah i mean uh i just listen if the right guy comes along and it just so happens to be my soulmate like obviously i don't think i'm gonna push him away but i mean I probably well, that's, well, that's like, kind of what i mean that's kind of what you're doing yeah, now probably well and, like whatever and like, you're also filling the you're filling that space up for your soulmate with dirt bags so that he it's not available. that's only out of boredom women do everything out of boredom oh if interesting. Wasn't bored, we wouldn't date like all y'all doing is entertaining us till the next guy entertained us right so sure so and the, the girl i always say a, a woman only dates a guy who she thinks is better than her you know no that, no, I keep, oh yeah, true. I only oh, yeah. that are worse than me because I want to feel like the superior. Yeah, but you're doing it. You're doing it because you on purpose because you don't want to be in a situation. You don't want to be in a situation where you have to actually make a decision. But women, you know, yeah. maybe women only stay that. with guys. Women stay yeah. with well, guys. You could, or she try could make a decision. She could just as well them. make a decision, a different decision. Like she could just choose. Like, like not what's the asshole. Asshole. Right. I mean, you can really just not do that. You know what I'm saying? If it's not. No, I don't have to. Right. But you, 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 but just, you just say you don't have to be doing this, girl. Like, right. It's, <laughs> come on back. You don't have to do this. It's, it's, I don't it's, have it's, to, but it's like I choose to do this. And it's like later on. Why do you choose to do it? Though? I've been doing like, this shit to myself because honestly, because that's how I write all my stories. It's like I allow all these fucked up shit to happen to me. And I'm like, damn, that's mad funny. But yeah, but my, you 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 can't be you can't have your life your love life in shambles just so that you could keep writing sketches. You know, I don't be sixty I, I years old. Stand up to it. I'm so, so lonely, like, but it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> it's not like I I don't purposely do it. It's like it just happens, and but it's like I have a chance to stop it before it happens. But my dumbass is like, so, nah, this is gonna be fun. Let's try this. So she's <laughs> she's going through fucked up relationships for the same reason Artie Lang keeps using drugs for the yeah. stories. Just, just basically, I, I need material. I need yeah. material. Um, what are some of the, you talk about some of the bad decisions that you've made. What are some of the types of, uh, I guess, for lack of a better term, dirt bags that you've dated? Or what are some of the, what are some of the top ones that, that stand out? Well, yeah, well, some, I want to say something real quick. First of all, she's attractive. Second of yeah. all, she's she's got she's 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 got she's she's an influencer. She's kind of doing her own thing. So a lot of times, a guy, nice guys, usually don't have the confidence to go. Yeah, I I I yeah, I want that, and I can get that. It's the dirt bags who are going. I ain't not shit. as intimidated I, as the good. Yeah, guy. they're not intimidated because they ain't shit. They don't. They're not even really. You, in order to be a dirtbag, you got to really be not unaware of yourself. About you got to not thing. give a fuck. Yeah, and so they, those are the ones that are hitting on it because there's a, that's a lot for a regular dude. That's a lot to climb. The I fact feel like that, I feel like it's <laughs> almost because there's there's definitely like an intenseness to her in the sense of like. She could be, uh, she's independent and like very high energy and sort of on her own. The meek guy is not going to be able to necessarily handle that. So it's almost like mm-hmm. with certain women, it's like wrestling a bear where the meek guys won't do it. And then the reckless guys are like, I don't give a fuck. I got nothing fuck, to lose. How much Joe Exotic? I, get, yeah. I gotta stay in I don't there. give a fuck. I'll I gotta, go ahead and catch her. He's <laughs> like, I got to stay in there with the bear. For, I'll do it. I got to stay in there with the bear till five minutes for $50. I'm I in. Fucking right. hell yeah. <laughs> So there's nothing in between. It's one guy going, I'm not going. That's fucking crazy. Are it's you a nuts? That's a line over there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The other guy going, oh, money too? Oh, I didn't know there was going to be some money. I would have wrestled the bear for free. God damn it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I was oh. wanting to wrestle the bear. <laughs> So, oh, shit. Hey, that's crazy though that's was it crazy. always that way for you like even as a young girl in high school and everything what like i was getting hollered at uh, yeah getting hollered at but also well, just picking the wrong dudes the what i'm sorry i said at 15 i had a bum jerk off to me on the train but i maybe at 15 morning, I, don't I mean know. come on having haven't we all right, it's, 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 it's new york city yeah <laughs> that's I mean. true that's how you can tell a real new yorker people that are just like that would look at that and go Nah. That's, yeah, the, that's, that's, that's the thing I hate most about the Corona. There's nobody jerking off to me no more. God, I mean, right? Like, no, no, no. Only, why is nobody jerking off? 
<laughs> well, the New York thing is no one pays attention to it. It's like, well, as long as I don't get any on me, I got it's none of my business. Exactly. Uh, a little on me, but keep the pants it, a roll. Keep oh, it moving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the homeless is running. Homeless is I, like, cause I, I'm still, I'm, I still work, have my day job, so I work at, and it's, it's like, the homeless are running in, in herds of motherfuckers. <laughs> when it's, it's, that's funny. Funny. It's just homeless herds drove herd. like homeless gangs, like the warriors. What'd you say, Harry? Like the warriors, yeah, the warriors like the warriors. The dudes, that's the dudes that smell like shit, and the yeah. dudes against the dudes that smell like piss. It's like that's different funny. gang warfare. <laughs> different gang warfare Shit versus piss is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, yeah, you know, they, they talk about each other. Oh yeah, niggas yeah. over there shitting on themselves. Then they was <laughs> the other day. I saw this lady. She had on. She had like a. Uh, I would say flip flops, but it was just sneakers that she had stepped on to the point where they were flip. Ah, she wore them down. <laughs> hey, she wore the counter down. My pops used to hate. It. I said, "Don't stand up on the back of your Yeah, and then uh, she had on like some tights and a coat with a. Uh, she had like a uh, a shopping bag hat, and uh, when she cut the mouth out, to, she cut put left the mouth in and cut the eyes out, so it was like her own, <laughs> like her own. And she was she had music. She was begging for money. Oh, but she had a oh, she had a, like an iPod or something like a I, I don't know she was playing music and I'm like bitch what are you you begging for batteries like I don't know what the fuck is she I, I only get money real. if the bum has a dog because then I start feeling bad like why the dog gotta go through it with you that's the hustle but what I've noticed the dogs usually look good yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, the healthy. bums look good too like they have a nice ass North Face their phone is better than mine like wait, wait, wait this isn't fair like, that's be, that's that because that they be conning you with the dog that's why they keep yeah, the dog yeah it's working because I love your dogs tax bracket, your tax bracket your tax bracket homeless fuck. goes up high. Your tax bracket goes crazy high on homeless when you got a dog. Like, oh, this dude got because everybody, nobody will give a fuck about the dude. They all like, oh, this no. dog's starving. And then he, and then you know, they just split a can. Of, they can split a can of dog food. That's it's like <laughs> you setting people up. So yeah, it's it's crazy. It's, I, it's so crazy now that like that and uh, just watching everything shut down. And um, what's what's interesting is like that this the genre of. Uh, the sketches and the Instagram stuff is is what everybody's watching now. Did you find that your your viewership has gone up since the whole Corona thing, or because everybody's home and or not I mean, really? It's it's kind of the same to me. Like yeah. it's just harder to because no one you can't collab with anybody. Like I'm still working with my friends, but it's you know only like two exclusive. Three, yeah, only two three people at a time, and like uh, most of the time I have to just do like. Daytime skits and shit, because now it's like it's really hard. People have to like go live together to gain mm. followers. Yeah. So it's it, you would think like because everyone is watching at home, but like you know, no one's collabing. So right now to grow is harder for some reason. Uh -huh. Like for right. for anyone that's just starting now, it's it's gonna take a while for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's the commitment is. <laughs> Like I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know if I could do three videos, four videos a day. Like I'm, lucky I'm just trying to get you to up. post once a week, and I that's just text. Post once a week. I, I think post. I think it is possible. It's just that it's a different muscle, different interest. Because we would instantly, all of us, all three of us, have done this before. Three sets, four sets a night, five sets a night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No sweat. We don't even think about it. Yeah. Two, three in the morning. We like. I've spoken to how many hundreds of people tonight? Twenty minutes a clip. Right. We've yeah. done different material. It's yeah. just a different muscle. Like you just don't care about. Yeah, the even ever. if you go, you go headline two shows an hour yeah, like, a show, and you we've done that before. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I guess it's the day, but man, I don't know. Or it just it's so hard. It's, it's like I'm, a, I'm <laughs> an older dude, and it's just like I, I you know, like it's I, like I want to talk to a motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like it's it's different. The other thing is like I've done a lot of acting. And people always say, well, what do you like better, acting or uh, or, stand, or up. stand up? And the thing with acting is like once you, you know, you 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 make whatever acting choices that you make and then you got to leave it. You, you put it up and you hope for the best. But you yeah. know, like comedy is an instant. I say it, you respond. Instant gratification. Yes, it, instant. Gra and I just the difference in that putting it up, like even when I'm, you know, doing uh doing blacklist or doing stuff like you know power and stuff and then you do it now you're you shot it and months later this thing comes up 
and you don't even know how you don't know what parts they cut out, what they left in. It's just, it's just left up to other people, and so I, I think you have that you have that control, more of a control with. Yeah. Like she kind of got, you have like, Maya has kind of the best of both worlds because she she's making the decisions about what what content she puts up. I mean, you still got to, and, and it's pretty instantaneous. I mean, as soon as you post it, motherfuckers start talking back. You know, they start liking it and watching it and viewing it in the first place. So it's weird. It's just a, a, such a different mindset. Did it take you a long time to get into that mindset where you were willing to, to, to do that much content or, or was it well, always just like just right away jump into it like and I didn't yeah. even know what I was doing like I would ask my manager like what's the goal here and he's like no one really knows just work you know, like keep working and mm -hmm. a lot of people would be selective but he would say you know no work with everybody you know cloud is cloud so it's like I'm glad I got to work with everyone because um, I got to see like everyone's different style everyone's sense of humor some people mm -hmm. you know like you have completely different sense of humors and it's like but you mesh well together and some people you could, you know, just have the same exact type of shit, but together you just don't create nothing don't good. Cause you're not yeah. like the energy is not there. Like you're not, you know, like, yeah. so, but I, I personally think that skits are easier than stand up a lot easier because skits is like anybody could have a funny moment. You don't have to be talented. You don't have to be even funny. Like you could have a funny moment by accident and somebody just happens to capture it. Right, but, right. you know, after that, it's like once people know who you are, it's like from there, just anything you post, people are going to fuck with it. As far as yeah. you just keep doing the same shit and try to make money off of it. Yeah. Let me ask you this. How many, how many guys, how often is guys that do talk to you don't know that you do this? And how many of them do you meet because of the fact that you do this? No, I think everyone I've talked to, like, knows. They know already. Yeah. I mean... Because the last guy I was talking to, like, I mean, you know, he also kind of, he, he wasn't a comedian. Like, I could never be a comedian because I have to be the funny one. And really, like, I can't be competing. Too funny. I'm just, so what if I'm doing better than you? Then you're going to always look at me like, uh, you know, and um, what's the word yeah. when you like? Just jealous. You jelly. Yeah, not, yeah jealous. Like, fucking yeah. whatever. Yeah. But so, but, you know, the last person I dated, they were music, but... Um, they were, they were cool with it. Yeah. You know, the only thing they wasn't cool with is like, like I did a skit about him, but I didn't tell him while we was yeah. arguing. So with him, it was more like, t you know, at least let me know you're going to be doing a skit about me. Right, 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 right. And then what was the question again? I'm fucking I mean, did, do the guys come <laughs> from, do the guys come from, are they usually, well, you kind of said it, that like most that, of the guys, you think, they're aware of who you are and stuff. You ever, you ever date a guy who's not aware of it and then. No, everyone's aware. And it's like, and my, mm. even my ex told me, you know, for you to meet a guy now, you're not going to even know what his true intentions are. And it's true because the last guy I met fucking was, you would think, you know, at first he was perfect because. He like understood what I did and he was cool with it. Not yeah, that's cool. With bitch and everything. Like, I think she was saying he'd be sitting there the whole time. Can we leave? Yeah. With well, so, you know, the same, the same reason why we love people is the same pre reason why we hate them. You know? Yeah. You love them, you're, you're hype because oh, I met the, I met the, the, I met um Maya on, and she does all these videos, and then it's like, yo, you still doing these videos? Like, oh, everything's a joke to you. It's <laughs> funny. Yeah, what the hell? Is everything In the funny? Beginning, it's like, oh my god, you're mad funny. Then damn bitch, you think everything's a joke? Like yeah. for the same reason someone likes you in the beginning, they're gonna start hating you for later. Yeah, that's but it. that's also but, insecurity on the guy's yeah. part. Yeah, he's every insecure. guy when I meet them, I'm not insecure. I'm not the jealous type. And then a week later, they're they're making these weird comments like, "Oh, like you know, like oh, I can't get no fucking thing because this guy, this guy's probably talking to you, or you talking to some other guys." And it's always like, and then you're like, "If like, well, I thought you mm -hmm. wasn't insecure," and it's like, "Yeah, I am with you," and it's like, "Uh, -uh. yeah." Home but bullshit. that's the thing. All guys have to do is be patient. Like I was just thinking that yeah. story. That's of, funny. Patient that, I mean, and that's, uh, you just gotta liar. wait it out. What happened? Patient and what? And be a good liar. Be Mr. Sound Good. Everything you say to me gotta sound good. No, see, I see. I couldn't do that. That's the part. <laughs> yeah, I'm not all gonna sound good. Yeah, I'm not lying. Just know what to not... say, like the right thing to say. Well, you know what to say if it's if it comes from an honest place. But if it's I mean, like, no, if you... no, I'm talking about shit like, you know, 
even though we haven't had sex yet, I feel like we fucked mentally. Like, things like that. <laughs> she wants, oh, she never, wants all no, the bullshit. She wants crazy. all the oh, frills, okay. the icing, the frills, and all the rest of some fucking... You know, like, fucking emotionally. Like, what like, like, the fuck? No, like, you have to say like, yo, like yo, that. Most... That would make me question myself. Like, am I weird for, like, thinking this is off? It is yo, like, bro. Yo, your, like your emotions is mad deep. <laughs> it run deep like the river. Sorry, <laughs> my we gotta get out of here. Um, plug your plug your Instagram and everything so the fans can check you out and everything. Go to damn homie eleven on Instagram. Damn homie eleven. All right, yo. Um, Dre, talk to me. Yeah, Andre D. Thompson. That's it. Just hit me up. All right, Harry. Uh, all my stuff is at I hate comedy.com, but, uh, also Bleach. download the, uh, not download, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're uploading this video and some classic stuff and you can see all the visuals and you yeah. can see the silly faces Andre makes because he's been stuck in a basement for six weeks. He's giving me the <laughs> finger guns now with a dumb smile on his face that, that I know he's I'm doing on purpose, doing but it's still making me angry. I'm doing bow and arrows. No more gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh everything with mine is uh Dante Nero on Instagram, Dante Nero, everything else. Also Dante Nero.com. If you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation, uh phone consultation, hit me at Dante Nero.com. Click on uh consult and book some time with me. Uh GYBB get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. If you like what we're doing, man, tell a friend, tell a friend, spread it. Um, and hit us up, yo. We are out. <laughs> <laughs>